What's up guys, today I'm going to show you the ultimate red themed loadout you can get in CS2. I purposely waited a long time to start doing CS2 loadout videos until there were a few rounds of skin changes made in the game so that these videos could hopefully remain helpful for a long time. After the recent changes made to Dopplers and some other skins, I think we're in the clear for a while, so I'm going to start pumping out more loadout videos for a bunch of different themes and colors. About a year ago before CS2 came out, I did an anime themed loadout video that people seem to enjoy so if there are any cool themes you'd like to see me do, make sure to drop a comment letting me know. But before I get into the red loadout, let's set some ground rules. Firstly, every item that I mention on this list must have some resemblance of red on the skin. It doesn't have to be majority red, red just has to be present. Second, I'm going to show my favorite red skin for every single weapon in the game because I obviously can't predict which weapons you guys use in your loadouts. And third, rather than being boring like every other loadout video, this video is actually going to be somewhat of a two in one, where I'm not only going to show you the best possible red skin for each weapon, but I'll also be showing you what I think is the best budget option for each weapon. So for example, let's say I was showing you the best green AK-47 skins, the best possible option in the game in my opinion would be the factory new AK-47 Wild Lotus worth over $11,000. But for the budget option, I would probably tell you to go with the souvenir field tested AK-47 green laminate since it's the cheapest version of that skin that still looks good. That being said, there still is a cheaper green option option in the emerald pinstripe, but I don't think that skin looks good, so I wouldn't include it on my list. I think you get the point. So now that we covered that, sit back and enjoy the best possible cheap and expensive red loadouts in CS2. Before I get into it, today's sponsor GamerPay wants to sponsor you with a free 5 euros on your first 50 euro deposit. GamerPay is an extremely trustworthy peer-to-peer -peer skin trading website where you can find some of the cheapest CS2 skins on the market. Take a look at this MAC-10 fade for example. Currently the cheapest one is on GamerPay. GamerPay has no buying fee and only a small 3% selling fee and you can even sell your skins on a trade lock. What are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to claim your free 5 euros today. Before we get into the weapon skins, let's start out with the agents. I'm actually going to give you guys three different options for both sides in order of cheapest to most expensive. On the T side, the first agent that you could use is Agent Soldier Phoenix who actually happens to be the cheapest sleeveless agent on the T side. Although this agent doesn't feature any red on his sleeves, he actually features a red face mask and red on his vest. Not only that, but I actually prefer sleeveless agents because it provides the most visibility for your gloves and knife. Another possible option option would be the slightly more expensive Maximus Saber who features dark brown leather sleeves with a bit of red undergarments. The red on red would look great with any red loadout but may cover up your gloves a tiny bit. The last option I'll give you for the T side is Agent Resin the Ready who features red leather sleeves that would also complement any red skins quite well. For the CT side, the first and cheapest option I'll give you is Agent Michael Cyphers. Michael Cyphers features black sleeves which look good with any color. The added bonus here is that his t-shirt is actually red. The next agent you could use would be 3rd Commando Company KSK. This agent features a washed out red and green camo suit which might be appealing to some of you. I'm personally not a huge fan but this agent does feature red. The final agent you could use would be Lieutenant Rex Crikey who is the cheaper of the two sleeveless agents on the CT side. Again, a sleeveless agent leaves more room for the focus to be on your skins. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to rock a sleeveless agent so you have a better view of the skins. Now that we have the agents covered, we have to have some gloves to match. Again, for the gloves, since there's such a variety that would work, I'll give you three good options. The first and cheapest option you could use would be a pair of field tested Bloodhound gloves charred. For the price, these gloves look absolutely amazing and feature the red mesh accents which will complement any red skin. Next up and only a bit more expensive would be the minimal wear driver gloves resin the red. These gloves feature a brighter red color and also much more red than the last pair. These guys are essentially the same price so it's all your preference. But this is an ultimate red loadout video, so I would be remiss if I didn't show you the absolute best pair of red gloves in the game. So the final option that would cost you an absolute fortune would be a pair of factory new specialist gloves, Crimson Kimonos. These are the best of the best when it comes to red gloves in the game. It doesn't get any better than this. Now we can move on to the pistols. First, we have the CZ-75 Auto. The best looking high tier CZ is the StatTrek factory new CZ Crimson Web. I will admit 
admit, this thing does look pretty good, but it's only this expensive because of how rare factory new crimson webs are. But if you're a crimson web fan, this thing is perfect for you. With that said, I actually think I prefer our budget option a little more. For the budget option, we have a minimal wear CZ pull position. This thing is $58 cheaper and honestly looks better in my opinion. If you don't like either of these options that much, you could also pick up a red aster, but I like these ones a bit more. Next up, we have the Desert Eagle. Much like the CZ, the most expensive high tier red deagle would be a Stat Trek Factory New Deagle Crimson Web. Compared to the CZ though, this thing looks amazing in my opinion. I didn't love the CZ one that much because it had a lot of black on it, but this deagle is fully red. But if you're not a huge fan, you could get a field tested Desert Eagle Code Red for a lot cheaper, which is a great budget option. This thing does start to look pretty bad in lower wares though, so be careful. Next up, we have the Dual Berettas. The high tier option on this list is going to be the Stat Trek Factory New Dualies Hemoglobin. Surprisingly, these things are only $20, but they're from one of the oldest cases in the game, the Weapon Case 2. These things do feature pretty bright red, so I do like them, but a great budget option that's over $19 cheaper would be the Field Tested Dual Berettas Panther. I honestly don't know which pair I like more. Next up, we have the 5.7. There are some decent 5.7 options in the game, but for the high tier one, I decided to go with the factory new 5.7 Crimson Blossom. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of any item from the St. Mark collection. The budget option was a little bit tougher because I don't really like any of the choices, but I ended up going with the factory new Urban Hazard. This guy's really cheap, so you can't really go wrong. Next up, we have the Glock 18. Being one of the most used weapons in the game, it's important to have a nice skin for it. So for the high tier one, we decided to go with the Stat Trek factory new Water Element. This is one of my absolute favorite OG Glock 18 skins and it looks great in a red loadout. It also has that awesome contrast between the red and the blue. For the budget option, we went for the extremely cheap factory new candy apple, but this thing still looks really, really clean. Next up, we have the P2000. For the higher tier option, we went with the Stat Trek factory new P2000 Obsidian, which I think looks pretty good. There aren't that great of red options for the P2K, but for the budget option, we ended up going with the factory new Imperial. This thing's only 27 cents and it looks pretty good. Next up and one of my favorite pistols in the entire game is the P250. For the higher tier option we went with a Stat Trek Factory new P250 Muertos. I've always thought this thing looks super clean, but if you're balling on a budget, you can't go wrong with a minimal wear Nevermore. It's so cheap at around 50 cents and it looks just as good. Well, maybe not just as good, but still pretty good. Next up we have the R8 Revolver. Like a couple of the other weapons we already went over, for the high tier option we went with the Stat Trek Factory new Crimson Web. This thing is a bit cheaper compared to the CZ and the Deagle, coming in at just around $18, but it looks very, very good. It's only sitting at this price because it's really not that used. But again, if you're not much of a Crimson Web fan, you could easily go with this budget option in the field tested R8 reboot. This thing doesn't have much red on it, but I still think it looks extremely good and has a pretty subtle vibe to it. It's a super sleek skin, in my opinion. Next up, we have the Tech 9. For the high tier option, we're going to go with the Stat Trek Factory New Isaac. At this point, this is a super OG skin, but that's weird to think about because it came out right around the time I started playing. Yeah, it's a pretty nice skin, but I think our budget option, the factory new re-entry, actually might look better. To be fair though, it is majority blue, so I don't know if you would even count it on your red list, but it still looks great. Next up, we have the USPS, and with our high tier option, we're starting to get in some really expensive territory. We ended up going with the Stat Trek factory new Kill Confirmed, which is worth around $400. I've always loved the Kill Confirmed and even own one for myself, but at this price, tag, I don't know if it's justifiable, but the budget option we chose looks amazing. We ended up going with a field tested The Trader. The Trader is one of those skins that doesn't really visibly wear much as it goes higher in float, so we ended up going with a field tested one which is worth around $7 and looks just like factory new. Next up we have the SMGs. First, we have the MAC-10. For the higher tier option, I went with a relatively newer skin in the factory new Propaganda. This thing came out in 2021, but it looks absolutely amazing in my opinion. To be honest though, if I had one of these in my inventory, I'd always be tempted to trade it up for a Glock Emerald, so be careful. But I'm not even too worried because I think I might like this budget option even more. I went with the factory new Aloha. Be honest, have you even seen this skin before? I don't think I've ever seen someone rock this in-game and I don't know how. This is such a 
a beautiful skin. I know it's not that bright of red, but it still looks amazing. I'm a sucker for those nature pattern skins. Next up, we have the MP5 SD. For the higher tier option, I went with a factory new MP5 Autumn Twilly. This skin looks great and it's still very cheap, but if you still can't afford that $5 price tag, something that's way, way cheaper and still looks quite good is the Souvenir Factory New Lab Rats. I know most people either love or hate this skin, so let me know which one you are in the comments. Next up, we have the MP7. All right, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. There are barely any good red options for this gun whatsoever. So for the high tier option, I went with the Stat Trek Factory New Bloodsport, which is around $12. But for the budget option, I also went with a Bloodsport just in normal factory new condition, which is around $2.50. To be honest, I don't think any of the other red MP7s are worth buying. Next up, we have the MP9. For the high tier MP9, we went with a factory new hot rod. Everyone loves the hot rod, man. You really can't go wrong. It's such a clean skin, especially in those lower floats, and the MP9 is no different than any of the other ones. It looks super clean, but to be fair, it does have a pretty high price tag, so if you can't afford it, our budget option is the minimal wear food chain. Unlike the hot rod, this thing isn't 100% red, but it still does have a lot of bright colors on it, which in my opinion looks great. Next up, we have the P90. For the high tier P90, we went with an absolute classic in the Stat Trek Factory New Cold Blooded. When I was making this list, I was honestly surprised that the Cold Blooded was so cheap in that wear. The more people trade these things up, the more they go up in value, which completely makes sense, but I thought they were worth a lot more at this point. It is a pretty OG skin, but to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the way it looks. And I kind of feel the same way about our budget option, which is the Souvenir Minimal Wear P90 Fallout Warning. Quite frankly, there aren't that many good P90 options in red, so we just had to go with these two, but it is what it is. Next is the PP Bison. For the high tier PP Bison, I went with one of my favorite skins in the entire game, which is the Stat Trek Factory New PP Bison High Roller. I just think this thing looks so sick, and honestly, it reminds me of Gamba, so what is there to hate? But if you're not a big fan, you could also go with the Factory New Candy Apple, which is much, much cheaper, coming in at around 3 cents. It's just an all red and black skin, which looks super, super clean. The final SMG on the list is the UMP45. For the high tier option, we went with the Factory New Crime Scene. I actually rocked one of these in my loadout for a few months and loved it, but again, it is pretty expensive, so if you're looking for something a bit cheaper, I'd say pick up the Factory New Blaze, which comes in at around $12. I know it's technically more orange than red, but this skin looks great. Next, we have the shotguns. For the high tier Mag 7, we actually have our most expensive item on the list so far in the Mag 7 Syncadia. In factory new condition, this thing comes in at around $600, but it does look so good. It's super bright and it gives me very royal vibes, so I really, really do like this skin, but let's be real, I'm not ever going to afford it, and why would I waste $600 on a Mag 7? If you're looking to get a Mag 7 though, just go with the cheaper option in the factory new Heaven Guard. This thing's only around 30 cents, but it does wear pretty poorly, so make sure you get it in a higher wear. Next up, we have the Nova. For the high tier Nova, I decided to go with the Stat Trek Factory New Nova Bloomstick, and it was an absolute no-brainer. The Bloomstick looks so, so good in my opinion. Like I said before, I'm a huge fan of the nature skins, and these bright red flowers look so amazing. This is a pretty old skin though, so it is super expensive for the Stat Trek Factory New version. But if you're looking for something cheaper, I'd recommend going with the Factory New Candy Apple, which gives off a very similar vibe, but only costs around 4 cents. Sadly, you won't get any nice flowers on it, but it still looks great. Next up, we have the Sawed Off. For the high tier option, I went with the Stat Trek Factory New Analog Input. This skin is extremely new and honestly doesn't cost that much. To be honest, there aren't that many good red options for the Sawed Off, but this extremely new skin does look pretty good. But if you're trying to stick to a mostly red loadout, I'd honestly recommend going with the budget version, which is the Factory New Brake Light. This thing only costs around 50 cents and it's all white and red, which looks super good. The last shotgun on the list is the XM1014. Wait, I thought this thing was a sniper. Nah, but in all seriousness, I went with the Factory New Red Leather as our high tier option. I've always thought the Baggage Collection skins look super classy, and this skin is no different. It's super clean, and I think the leathery look looks amazing. But if you're looking for something a bit more flashy, I'd go with the Budget option in the Factory New Tranquility, which still costs around $15. I am a big fan of the Tranquility, but sadly you can't get this thing in higher wares because it wears very poorly. If you're gonna get it, I'd recommend sticking to Factory New Condition. Next up, we have the Light Machine Guns. First is the M249. For the high tier one, I went with the Stat Trek Factory New Nebula Crusader. I just want to say, if this skin was on any other gun but the M249, I think it would be worth boatloads. This is actually probably in my top 5 favorite skins in the entire game. This thing just reminds me of my childhood, it's super flashy, it's got the pinball vibe on it, there's just nothing wrong with it. But again, if you want something a bit cheaper, 
Viper, I'd go with the Minimal Wear System Lock. This thing does have a lot more red on it compared to the Nebula Crusader, which has a lot more colors going on. So like I said before, if you're trying to stick with that purely red loadout, I'd go with the System Lock. Next up, we have the Negev. All right, here it is. You know I had to say it. This thing is extremely expensive, but it is the best red Negev in the game. For the high tier option, we went with the Factory New Mjolnir. This thing comes in at just over $2,100, and no, I do not think it's worth it whatsoever. It does look super good, but realistically, why are you paying two grand for a Negev skin? There aren't that many other good options, but for the budget option, I went with the Factory New Phoenix Stencil. I really do like a lot of the skins from the Havoc collection because of that graffiti vibe, and the Phoenix Stencil falls under that same umbrella. It is a mostly blue skin, but the reds in it do pop. Next up, we have the rifles. First on the list is the AK-47. For the high tier red option here, we went with the StatTrak Factory New AK-47 Bloodsport. This has always been an absolute favorite skin of mine. I'm personally a big fan of skins that have a lot going on, and this skin definitely has a ton going on. It's super flashy, and this thing will definitely turn heads. But if you're looking for something a bit cheaper that still gives off a similar vibe, I'd go with a field tested Empress. The Empress has also been a favorite skin of mine for a long time, and it looks great in almost all wares. That being said, I would try to stick to field tested and above. Next up, we have the AUG. For the high tier option, we went with the factory new Hot Rod. This thing comes in at around $400, which is bonkers. Like, don't get me wrong, it looks good, but $400 good? I don't know. If it were me, I'd personally pick up our budget option, which is the Souvenir Minimal Wear Sandstorm. This thing's just over $2, and it looks amazing. Like, Sure, I know it's no hot rod, but come on, for $2, you can't go wrong. Next is the FAMAS. For the high tier option, we went with the Stat Trek Factory New Roll Cage. The FAMAS is known for having notoriously bad skins, and honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the roll cage, but it doesn't look that bad for a red skin. That being said, I don't know if I'm paying $67 for it, but on the bright side, our budget option honestly looks better in my opinion. For that, I went with the Field Tested ZX Spectron. This is another one of those skins that looks good in every wear, but we went with field tested because it's still super cheap and it looks so clean. The black and red look is super sleek with the rainbow popping in the middle, it just looks great. Next up we have the Galil. For the more expensive option, I went with the Factory New Dusk Ruins. This is a pattern based skin where you can get varying amounts of red, so make sure to look through all the patterns when you're purchasing it. But again, if you're trying to spend a little bit less money on a skin, I'd recommend going with the Minimal Wear Crimson Tsunami. When I got back into CS a few years ago, this was actually the Galil I rocked for a long time. Yeah, the colors are a bit more more muted than the Dusk Ruins, but I think it looks super good. And it too is a pattern based skin. Next up, we have the M4A1S. All right, this is where we start shedding out big bucks. For the high tier option, I went with the Souvenir Factory New M4A1S Welcome to the Jungle. This thing is worth just shy of $5,000. Like, don't get me wrong, it is an amazing looking skin, but with those souvenir stickers on it, you can't even see the artwork. There's really no point in paying that much money for a skin. So for a bit of a cheaper option, I went with the Minimal Wear Briefing. Like a couple of the other skins we've seen on this list so far, this is more of a low key skin with less red on it, but since it has a different base color with the red accents, it does make the red pop a lot more. I personally think the briefing looks better than the other budget red options. Next up, we have the M4A4. I know I said we were shedding out money on that last skin, but get ready for this. For the high tier option, I went with the Stat Trek Factory New M4A4 Howl, worth $12,500. I'm sure you know the Howl lore and why it's so expensive, and rightfully so because it's extremely rare and it looks so good. But let's be honest, if you're here, you're probably not trying to spend that much money on a skin. So for the budget option, I went with the Minimal Wear Spider Lily. There are a couple other red options in a similar price range that you could go for, but I think the Spider Lily looks better than them. The shiny metallic design looks amazing in my opinion. The final rifle on the list is the SG553. For the expensive option here, we went with the Souvenir Factory New Integral. This honestly is my style of skin, but again, $1,300 for an SG is wild. So if you want something a bit cheaper that still looks great, I'd go with the Minimal Wear Darkwing. It costs less than 50 cents and the red pops tremendously. Next, we have the Snipers. First, and quite possibly the most important gun in the game, is the AWP. For the high tier option, I went with the Stat Trek Factory New Op Oni Taiji. This is my absolute favorite skin in the entire game. If you've seen videos of mine in the past, you probably already know that. This is one of very few skins where I have absolutely no complaints. The artwork is amazing and the colors pop so well. The purple on red design looks great and works with a ton of different loadouts. But if you're looking for something a bit cheaper, I'd go with the Minimal Wear Atri. 
costs less than 50 cents and there's a lot of red on it. It looks pretty good. Next up is the SSG-08. For the high tier option and Sparkle's biggest enemy, I went with the Stat Trek Factory New Blood in the Water. Wow, these days these things are coming in at over $330. That's absolutely crazy. But it does look amazing and I love the fact that it has a blue and white base with red accents. It makes the red pop a lot more. For the budget option, I went with the Minimalware Redstone. I've only ever seen this skin in game one time and I was honestly super pleased when I picked it up. It's a super calm red color and it's really sleek because almost the entire gun is red. It looks great. Next is the G3 SG-1. For the higher tier option, I went with the Stat Trek Minimal Wear Executioner. Honestly, I don't think this skin looks good at all, but it is the most expensive red G3, so if you like it, you should probably pick it up. That being said, I personally prefer the budget option more, which is the Souvenir Factory New Ancient Ritual. Yeah, I know, some of you will probably say this isn't really a red skin, but if you look more to the left, I'd consider that red. That being said, I really love the designs on it, and I think it would go well in a red loadout. The final sniper is the Scar 20, and like many of the other weapons on this list, for the high tier option we went with the Stat Trek Factory New Crimson Web. This thing is a little cheaper than some of the others, coming in at around $38, but it looks just like them. That being said, if you want something a little bit cheaper that honestly looks a bit better in my opinion, I'd go with the Factory New Bloodsport. It's only 5 bucks, it has a lot more going on, and the red's more vibrant. It's a win-win. Alright, now that we've covered all of the weapons in the entire game, let's cover the most important item of them all, the knife. Just like the agents in the gloves, I'll give you guys three knife options of varying prices. First up and the cheapest knife on the list is the Field Tested Gut Knife Autotronic. This knife looks like no other in the entire game and comes in at just $130. You can't go wrong. Next up and for the middle price range, we have the Minimal Wear Stiletto Crimson Web. I absolutely love the stiletto and you really can't go wrong with the Crimson Web finish. I know we already had a lot of Crimson Web coverage on this list, but the Crimson Web on the stiletto is super sleek and minimalistic. This is just a great looking knife all around. Finally, and in my opinion, the best high tier red knife in the entire game is the Factory New Karambit Doppler Ruby. The lowest listing for this thing right now is over $8,500 and rightfully so because it is absolutely gorgeous. This knife paired with the Crimson Kimonos is unbeatable. And with that, we've now covered the ultimate red themed loadouts in CS2. The total cost of the entire high tier loadout is $46,203.37, but the budget loadout with everything included is only $300. $373.01. Which one do you prefer more? Let me know if there are any red skins that you would have liked to see on this list, and more importantly, what themes you'd like to see me do next. By the way, I'm giving away this Bowie Knife freehand when I hit 30,000 subscribers, and I also do separate weekly skin giveaways in my Discord server, so if you want to enter those, check out the links in the description. Catch you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, YouTube thinks you'll like this one too. Oh yeah, and YouTube told me 75% of you aren't subscribed yet, so go thumb wrestle that subscribe button down below.